While the majority of horror films maintain the status quo that the villain is always the most dangerous character in the equation, there are a select few in which the purported victim reveals that they were an exceedingly poor choice of prey, usually with gloriously bloody results. So with that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture here with 10 horror movies where the victim is more dangerous than the villain. Number 10. The Purge James Sandin is an affluent security system designer, which comes in pretty handy when you inhabit the universe in which the Purge film series takes place. You all know the drill by now, criminal responsibility is suspended for 12 hours and society is cordially invited to rape, steal and rip each other to bloody shreds for no reason other than stuff it, it's Purge night. Accordingly, it's fortunate for the Sandin family that James is a straight up badass. After his home is besieged by a gang of purgers chasing an unidentified stranger who gate crashes the Sandin home, James proceeds to dispense swift and bloody justice upon the homebreakers. Despite being massively outnumbered, he manages to obliterate several of the invaders with a combination of shotgun pellets and pool balls in an absolutely epic brawl. James is ultimately stabbed by the leader of the invaders and dies of his wounds before the film's conclusion, but his time on screen firmly established him as considerably more dangerous than any of the depraved psychopaths who entered his home. One on one with this guy? Yeah, good luck with that. Number 9. Tucker and Dale vs Evil Tucker and Dale vs Evil is an absolute scream of a horror film, in the best way possible. The film actually portrays the two titular bumbling hillbillies as villains within the context of the movie itself. The sweet, well-meaning buffoons couldn't and wouldn't harm a fly, but through a series of unfortunate misunderstandings and lack of context, the pair are interpreted by a group of college kids to be insane, murderous bumpkins. That would make the leader of said college kids, the obnoxious Chad, the victim of the piece, although as the film soon shows, he is anything but. Deranged Loon would be putting it mildly. Instigating the attacks against Dale and Tucker before he literally tortures the latter by removing a few fingers, Chad is an unhinged psychopath and infinitely more dangerous than the pure evil that the lovable simpletons supposedly represent. He is also revealed to be the son of a participant in the infamous Memorial Day Massacre, an incident involving a murderous group of hillbillies 20 years earlier. Chad's deluded mind may lead him to believe that he is the victim of the 2010 sleeper hit, but his conduct and actions would indicate that he is is far more dangerous than the purported villains of the film. Number 8. Hostel Now you'd think that a shadowy international organisation that specialises in the abduction, torture and murder of unsuspecting tourists would be a little more sensible in picking their victims. College students Paxton and Josh are the latest unlucky duo to be kidnapped by the elite hunting club. Josh is duly dispatched in suitably grisly fashion, but Paxton soon begins to demonstrate that the twisted organisation may have bitten off more than they can chew. Not only does Paxton manage to free himself after having several of his fingers amputated, he takes out a guard and another torturer while freeing fellow abductee Kana, before using their escape car to mow down the man and two women who helped ensnare him and Josh. He is also smart enough to enlist outside help, bribing a group of street urchins into murdering the men pursuing them. Paxton finally underlines how much more dangerous he is than the villains of the film when he realises he is on the same train as Josh's murderer, who he savagely murders in a toilet after relieving him of two of his fingers in a gloriously bloody revenge arc. Number 7. Carrie in the sole supernatural example of a victim more dangerous than the villains of the piece, we have 1976's Carrie, based on the novel by King of Horror Stephen King. Timid and bashful Carrie is utterly neglected and abused by her obsessively religious mother Margaret and mercilessly bullied at high school, in particular by one Chris Harganson. Carrie realises that she possesses telekinetic powers as the film progresses, the development of which coincide with her being asked to prom by the popular Tommy Ross, although unknown to Carrie, this is all at the behest of Tommy's girlfriend Sue. Carrie's bullies eventually corner her at prom, rigging the ballot to get her elected prom queen before drenching her in a bucket of pig's blood while she stands on stage in one of the most heartbreaking sequences in horror history. The incident pushes Carrie over the edge. She proceeds to use her powers to burn down the gym before sending Chris and her boyfriend Billy to their deaths in a fiery car explosion as they attempt to run her down. After her deranged mother attempts to murder her in the film's thrilling finale, Carrie caps off how much more dangerous she is than her first and final tormentor by using her powers to crucify her mother before dying in a flaming blaze as her house burns down. I think it's safe to say that Margaret and Chris messed with the wrong girl. Number 6. I Spit on Your Grave 
In by far the darkest example on this list, and possibly in the history of film, we have 1978's I Spit on Your Grave. Let's just get this out of the way, I Spit on Your Grave is a horrendous film on pretty much every level imaginable. The depraved horror tells a tale of revenge inflicted by a rape survivor upon her attackers, and highlights the very darkest, inhuman aspects of humanity. From everything, from its subject matter to the unflinchingly visceral manner in which it is portrayed. However, it cannot be debated that the victim of the shudder-inducing film is immeasurably more dangerous than the vile rapists who take the role of the villains of the piece. Jennifer Hill, a writer, is the victim of the appalling act of sexual assault and takes her revenge in as vicious a manner as physically possible. Given the appallingly delicate subject matter, it's almost unfathomable that the director chooses to dispatch the villains of the piece in a manner more suited to Friday the 13th or Evil Dead, but do so he does. It's hard to nominate the more disturbing death, the screaming castrated man bleeding to death in the bathtub as classical music plays, or the one who was ripped to pieces with a boat propeller. While the film is a nauseating experience from start to finish, it cannot be debated that Jennifer demonstrated that she is far more dangerous than a gang of vile rapists. Just ask the guy in the bathtub. Number 5. I Saw the Devil While there is the argument that 2010's I Saw the Devil is more of a thriller than a horror, we're gonna let that slide. The horrifyingly intimate subject matter of the film is arguably infinitely scarier than a few jump scares and squirts of corn syrup. The Korean masterpiece tells the tale of a serial killer who unwittingly dispatches a young woman unaware that her betrothed, a Korean intelligence agent, will swear undying revenge on him. This aforementioned agent soon discovers who the killer is, but does not dispatch him, choosing to implant him with a GPS device and torture his twisted way of living. But this plot backfires on the agent as the killer deduces his identity and brutally murders his father and sister-in-law to be in retaliation. However, he eventually gets his hands on the killer and enacts his revenge in the most chilling fashion possible, strapping the murderer into a makeshift guillotine that is triggered by his family opening the door to the room in which he is imprisoned, beheading the murderer at his most painful moment and sending his family to therapy for the remainder of their lives. Number 4. Don't Breathe Three 20-something-year-old hoodlums break into an old blind man's house to steal $300,000 he has purported to have stashed away in a safe. It would appear fairly clear-cut who the victim is in this scenario. Unfortunately for the three would-be thieves, they soon discover that they have made a fatal error. This is no ordinary old blind man. Let's be clear, these three are no hardened criminals. While they demonstrate the usual level of braggadocio associated with low-level street thugs, they are not exactly the slickest group of robbers. Considering the adversary they find themselves up against, this is an almost comical recipe for disaster. Norman Nordstrom, the blind old man, is a Gulf War veteran, and the loss of his sight has enhanced his other senses to levels that would put Spider-Man to shame. Despite his complete lack of vision, he demonstrates his terrifying combat abilities when he effortlessly kills lead thief Money, and his ferocious intelligence is on full display throughout the entire film as he hunts the remaining survivors through his house. He is even revealed to have captured a young woman against whom he holds a personal vendetta for killing his daughter. The idea that someone blind is capable of such a feat is utterly terrifying. A class example of you picked the wrong house buster. Number 3. Prey the Predator, despite wielding less deadly earlier versions of the weaponry and technology that fans of the franchise have grown to love, is still a ridiculously formidable adversary, capable of killing hordes of humans stupid enough to try their luck. However, this does not do it one bit of good against the determined young woman, who uses her ingenuity and bravery to ultimately outwit the deadliest hunter to touch down on Earth. By the time the end of the film rolls around, despite all the advantages the terrifying creature holds, Naru emerges victorious victorious after relieving the Predator of its mask and using its spear gun against it. Naru caps off the latest installment of Not To Be Messed With as she beheads the monstrous creature and paints her face in the luminescent blood before returning to her tribe to be declared the new war chief in honour of her achievement. It's surprising the Predator's even dared to return after receiving such a thorough spanking. Number 2. No One Lives Picture the headline, group of career thieves kidnap man and woman. One could feel fairly certain that these unfortunate pair are the victims of the scenario. The man, portrayed by sensational character actor Luke Evans and referred only to as Driver, wages a campaign of destruction against the gang that would make Vlad the Impaler wince. 
Career criminals the group may be, but this does little to aid them against the driver, revealed to be the perpetrator of the massacre of 14 wealthy young socialites that captured headlines nationwide. The gang gets absolutely annihilated by the driver, there's just no other way to describe it. Dropped into a meat grinder, impaled with a scythe, or executed with a shotgun blast to the face, the criminals are like sheep amongst a wolf on steroids. A particularly unfortunate member has his face mangled in a car engine before the driver finds him recovering in hospital and finishes him off with the aid of a clipboard. Yep, a clipboard. Number 1. You're next. Another classic case of mask-wearing morons picking the wrong person slash girl to F with takes place in 2011's cult classic You're Next. Three animal mask killers ambush a family reunion with accordingly bloody results, only to swiftly realise that Erin, girlfriend of family member Crispin, would not be out of place in a Rambo movie. Raised in a survivalist compound, Erin is a master of hand-to-hand -hand combat. She brutally kills the masked intruders one by one after weakening them with booby traps. Despite being hampered by a leg wound, she is the last person standing at the blood-soaked conclusion, executing her boyfriend when he reveals his involvement in the vicious attack. The film ends on a cliffhanger when Erin is shot by an attending policeman, but the fact that she is far more dangerous than her attackers is underlined by the final act. One of her booby traps savagely obliterates the officer with an axe to the head. And that concludes our list. If you think we missed any, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also, head over to Twitter and follow us there, and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day, and I'll see you real soon.